Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Today we're continuing our series here. It's a short one, but a series nonetheless on finishing ash. We've got a couple, this, this is the second video. So if you haven't seen the first one, check it out because we did the prep work. We've got a couple different things prepped here. We've got sandblasted ash, sealed, sandblasted, sealed over some dye. This is the um, Bellin or Mohawk dye, the NGR dye stains. We've got burnt lightly. We've got the aggressive burning with the wire brush technique. Lots of cool stuff here. Um, tinted wood filler, clear wood filler from Crystalac. We've got dyed and sealed, dyed and sanded back. And we've got some raw wood. This is all ash. This is all, first of all, because ash is one of the more versatile woods in, type, in terms of types of finishes that it can accept because of the type of grain that it has. But it's also in anticipation of the great guitar build off. Whoa, that's coming up real quick here where uh, my build is going to be on a piece of ash. So lots of possibilities here. We've got some prep work done. We've still got some raw pieces too. Let's try out some finishes. The open grain on this stuff really does create some additional possibilities for textured finishes like this sandblasted one and this burnt one. Um, and it also creates some interesting opportunities to do grain accenting techniques. So we're gonna take a crack at a few of those today. We're gonna to work with what we've got here. This guy, like I said, is already sealed on both sides. So we're gonna talk about, I've always uh, shown you guys techniques where you stain first and then seal. Or we're gonna talk about a couple techniques where you can seal first and then stain here. We're gonna work with some interesting items that are available at hardware stores like Home Depot. And we're gonna work with some Odie's oil and one of their pigments to do a really cool finish that way. You guys have probably seen me recently do an unboxing of this and maybe a demo of some of the Odie's oil stuff. And then finally, we're also gonna do a quick spray on one or two of these. We're gonna use the Heritage Red Transparent from Oxford. If you guys have been following my channel, you've seen me do a bunch of stuff with Oxford, currently available in Canada, but as soon as the border opens up, there's gonna be some stuff going on to make it available in the States as well. So, exciting times. So with that in mind, let's bring the camera in closer here and I will show you guys some cool stuff. Let's get on it. So jumping right in here, I'm going to start with some unicorn spit stain, which is a stain that's available at Home Depot and, and places like that. It's, it's kind of like a wiping acrylic. It doesn't really behave like a stain. It's a little thicker. Um, good for those serious type finishes and stuff like that. And we're just trying it here just on some bare wood to see what it looks like on its own. And the answer is, well, it, it's strong. It looks like this. <laughs> it's uh, a little more opaque than your typical stain, but gives an interesting finish. Really, really bright. Uh, definitely not a, a vintage style look. Now we're going to try out the white one and see if we can get it to go into the grain on this dyed piece of wood. I don't have a squeegee handy. That would be helpful. So this is not ideal, but I'm using a ruler. Uh, we'll chalk this one up to not my best work, but the, the point kind of kind of still works. You would need a little bit more sealer, probably another coat or two, and ideally a slightly deeper grain in order to get this to work the way you'd really want it to. But once I wipe all of this excess off, uh, it's got a bit of an odd sheen to it in the camera that would be helped by, by adding, you know, another kind of finish coat on top, but it, you get the idea. So to kind of take that excess white off of the top, I'm going to use just a touch of Odie's oil, kind of a actually a comically small amount because of how far this stuff goes, and my lightly abrasive white scotch bright pad. If you use a, a green one or a red one, you might run into some trouble with taking off a ton of finish. But I'm going to use that to buff off the excess white dye from the top, so the extra unicorn spit there. What a funny name <laughs> that that's going to come off uh, and we're going to be left with, well, this pretty much just ends up looking like a black dyed piece of wood. I pulled most of the white out of there. There's a little bit in the green. It's kind of tough to see though. This is the one that I just dyed and then did the sand back on. There's a bit of a saw blade mark there, but you get the idea. So I go over it again with the red uh, and this one actually looks awesome. So if you're, uh, if you're looking for a very easy, grain accent and dye technique with a very vibrant color. This worked out quite well. This was just the black NGR stain and then sanding off the excess. All wipe on finishes, pretty straightforward. 
here's where we get kind of funny. I'm not sure what I was thinking here. I think uh, I was looking for my gold wax that is awesome for this kind of like metallic green fill technique. I couldn't find it uh, and I wasn't paying attention and I grabbed this gold acrylic that uh, someone else purchased for a you know for a project so I kind of got into arts and crafts mode here but since I couldn't find the gold wax I put that into the the deep sandblasted grain and you'll see how that turned out I'm just letting it dry but it's actually pretty interesting on top of this burn accented piece I'm going in with that white uh, unicorn spit stain to see how that looks with kind of the bleached look over top I'm pretty happy with this it turned out really cool it gave the uh, the natural ash a whiter look obviously and then we've still got that accenting coming through turned out pretty neat next up again I'm using just a little bit of the Odie's oil I needed to touch more this time because I'm going to be mixing it with one of their pigments this is their uh, stone gray one I'm just going to put a very small amount of that in here as well and mix them together usually you would use the uh, everlasting oil or the super penetrating oil from Odie's oil when you're doing this but I wanted to use this also as kind of the final finish and just force a little bit of that pigment down into the grain um, on the heavily burned side of our burn test piece. So I'm putting that on. There's a little bit more pigment in there than one might expect. But this actually turns out really neat. It gives a nice sheen. Unfortunately, I'm shaking the table all over the place and the camera's kind of connected to it. But anyway, it gives a very nice sheen takes off a little bit of the char that didn't come off with the wire brush because I'm using this abrasive pad and it's going to be a very subtle effect so you don't really catch it in the camera but that that pigment gets pushed into the grain and kind of gives just a very subtle gray effect at the bottom of those grain depressions. The pigments I will say do tend to work better on lighter pieces of wood and that's what I'm doing here is I'm just putting it over some natural wood and really what the pigment is doing is it's going down into that grain and just kind of accenting it a bit and actually darkening it up a bit. I miss, uh, kind of misunderstood this. I thought the pigment was going to be lighter, but because it's a gray, it actually acts as a darker accent on the natural wood. And then, of course, a slightly lighter accent when we do it over the heavily burned piece. Here's one that I'm really excited about. This is that Heritage Red from Oxford, and that is an awesome color. It dries a little darker. You'll see it's got a bit bit more of an orangey hue to it because it is heritage red dries in a few seconds you can see I'm already touching it and that was over the dark green filler that was sanded back and here we're going over the clear green filler this is like 30 seconds after I sprayed the last one doing my quick two passes there and you can see how those two look so there it is over the dark green filler nice little accenting technique you could also do that over the dye sand back and there it is on the plain green filler Comparing that to the unicorn spit, you can see the change in color. One's a little bit more of a vibrant pinky red, and the other one has an oranger, more vintage, heritage red look, as you would anticipate from the name. So this is the one that I did that goofy acrylic thing on. Um, don't judge me. It's not uh, not the best idea I've ever come up with by any means, but it actually ended up pretty cool. Like You've got this cool kind of gold accenting technique for the grain. Would have been neater probably in silver. But I'm going back over it now with a razor blade and scraping off all the excess, exposing the wood on top. And if I went over this with a candy now, something like that Heritage Red, I'd probably end up with a very interesting finish. I may have to do that at some point. This is the sealed uh, NGR dye stain, all Mohawk products. The stain's Mohawk, the sealer's that easy vinyl sealer from Mohawk. And I'm going to do kind of three different things here. So first of all, I'm going to go over it again with this red wipe-on dye. Uh, and I'm going to try applying it kind of squeegee style with a razor blade because I don't have a squeegee. But then I'll just end up wiping it in. And you'll see what we end up with. First of all, we've got the dye right over the yellow, which kind of kind of looks good. It's got an interesting uh, interesting appearance to it. Remember, this is a heavily textured piece of wood because I did the sandblasting on it. So we've got some extra kind of variables coming in from the deep green. So now I'm going to wipe on some more and you can see how it looks like that. And then I'm going to kind of try and buff off all of the excess red off of the top of the green so we can see what that looks like. And this is um, this is pretty cool. I'm happy with how this turned out. As I continue to do this, 
it kind of brings out some oranges and a, an array of colors, hues from the yellow down to the, the deep red inside of the depressions and the green. And I think that looks awesome. I'm really happy with that. And then I'll show you yet another finish that you can do this way, um, which is aggressive looking and I don't like, but hey, it's, it's a demonstration. So uh, if you're into this one, then excellent. Now you can see how to do it. I'm scraping off the top, uh, and again, that red is stuck down into the deep green, so that doesn't come off. The yellow does, though, because I'm scraping it, so you end up with very little of the yellow left. And that's uh, how you make your piece of wood look like a crime scene. I basically went into arts and crafts mode here, uh, so I'm, you tell me if it went well or not, but uh, it was fun. I, it took me forever to wash my hands after. Again, just doing some of the, the white, this time not on an accented piece. And you can see as I add a couple coats of that, it kind of gets that whitewash look. This is actually, I mean, this is an unusual method for it, but actually a pretty popular thing. And a lot of people have asked me about how to do a whitewash looking finish. So that product works fine for it. Now the Mohawk Tongue Oil, uh, pretty standard. Looks good on ash. You know, you can do, you can build up a whole bunch of coats on this. This stuff is the modified tongue oil, so it's mildly polymerized. Um, and yeah, it, it looks like an oil finish. But what looks cooler is something with a little bit of tint to it. So if you get this Watco Danish oil, this stuff's really easy to come by. You just grab it from Home Depot. Look at that. That is not really a finish per se. You'll probably want something on top of it because it doesn't offer a lot of protection. But the, uh, the tint that they put in this, it just looks awesome. I, I love how this stuff uh, goes on and the look it gives. Much more interesting than just a plain oil finish. And you can put other oils on top of it or polys or stuff like that. It soaks right in. There are a few different ways to apply Danish oil, but it's a pretty easy wipe on finish one way or the other usually. Now moving on to a more typical stain. This actually looks a lot like the red mahogany uh, Danish oil, but it's the red mahogany stain from Varathane. You can see what you end up with there. Again, the, the deeper grain, of course, gets darker. And the, the tighter stuff, the non-open grain, is going to look a little lighter. Standard wipe on poly. You guys have seen me do this a bunch of times. You can apply this with sandpaper. If you're not doing anything beforehand, you can put it on with some 800 grit and you know get a little bit of filling action there. See my video on how to get a super smooth finish by hand. But uh, yeah, just wiping it on works fine. So... Here's what we end up with kind of. I've got, because I did a couple of really goofy ones there, I experimented with another one that you'll see in a second. But these are the ones that uh, that I've shown you so far. Pretty happy with, with all of the options here. And there are certainly more. Um, the versatility of ash is, is one of the coolest things about it. It's a nice wood. It's a good hardwood. But uh, that open grain, you know, it's a little more attractive, most people think, than oak. And that open grain is just awesome. So this is a sandblasted piece again where I've put actually a metallic acrylic finish on it, bronze, and now I'm using that red, you know, for some reason, this was my first time using that red unicorn spit, and uh, you can tell I was pretty fond of it because I decided to try it on a whole bunch of stuff. So I'm using that to darken this up, get kind of a more rosy color, and get some red into the deep green. It takes me a couple tries here um, to get it filled in enough. But I thought that this would give a really interesting look, and I'm going to buff off the excess. What I didn't do in this video, and I'll probably try on my own, is, is then applying some of that Odie's oil on top and kind of taking a little bit more of the excess off the top and seeing how that looks. But uh, when you see how this turned out with the red down in the grain and the metallic on top, that's a very cool finish. I'm really happy with that look. But maybe I'm just weird. Who knows? Well, there you go, guys. We tried some stuff. We had some fun. I'm inclined to say mixed results in terms of the actual finishes. Some of these are really cool. I'm really happy with this Heritage Red Transparent from Oxford. Um, I think these unicorn spit stains are very interesting. And of course, the Odie's Oil did a really cool job um, with that pigment in there. And I've got some other ones that I'm going to want to try, which we'll be putting into a video fairly soon. So all in all, I'm happy with how that turned out, and I hope it gave you guys some cool ideas for how to finish your ash. Let me know what you think of these. Let me know if you have any other cool ideas for finishing ash. I am inclined to try a few more out, uh, make a bit more of a mess of my workspace, apparently. 
All right, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out and I appreciate it when you do. And remember to subscribe so you can see, well, whatever else we end up doing with this stuff, plus my great guitar build off video and all of my other tutorials. There's a lot. I hope you uh, have some time on your hands. Thanks again, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time. Have a good one.